Ooh, 12 rounds, eh? Well, imagine my excitement when I opened the box and then I found out there were not 12 rounds in the box. There were one, two, three, four rounds in the box. Yeah, I was not very excited. I was actually looking if there was anything wrong with it because it says 12 realms and there isn't. So of course this will open for expansions later, but uh, the disappointment was a bit already there. So the game itself, it is a cooperative game, it has great artwork and it is set in a, a bedtime story setting. So for me, the, these were all things that, to make me really excited about the game. So how is it uh, to play? Let's find out. Hello. So yeah, let's find out. Uh, let's do the ro rules and uh, okay. Yeah, the rules are pretty. It's a lot of text and uh, but they seem quite straightforward. And you have uh, visuals to help set up the game. And yeah, I think I think we're good to go. So let's see here. Uh, okay, let's try. Let's find out. How to set up the game and how to begin is quite easy, and uh, also how to win the game. So that's it, definitely the best part of the game so far. And each player gets to choose his own uh, fairy tale hero. It could be the D'Artagnan or uh, Siegfried, Robin Hood, uh, the Nutcracker, Sugar Plum Fairy. Who's that? I don't know. Snow White, Red Riding Hood, and uh, Jean d'Arc. These heroes is uh, part of your choosing. Uh, hey, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The player sheets have some kind of uh, symbology there. I don't know what they do, but couldn't be that hard, could it? Let's let's find out. Ah, okay. Uh, the the backside of the rulebook they show all the symbols here. It's quite a few of them, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get through it. No problem. After each uh, hero has chosen their figure, they can choose to start on any board, and uh, there's no limitation to how many you can start on the same board. I think. Uh, okay, let's let's uh, stop there. Let's start with the suffering of the game. Okay, so let's start with this one. The game comes with uh, action points. And uh, the, we have for movement and for magic and something else. And the same in the blue ones. And there are many more. The game does not provide you that what the difference is. It tells you, well, you gain a blue one. And later, yeah, you gain a red one. What's the bloody difference? It doesn't tell anywhere. I know what it is now, but man, ah, it's it's... Annoying. Remember the icons on the back of the rule book? Well, let's try to buy something then. We can buy a guild thief, and he has an icon here with a fire icon, a H, a shield, and a blue arrow pointing to the EN plus one. What? This. Each icon is, is on the back side. <laughs> the combination? No way. Okay, so let's see this one. Okay, this seems basic. Again, a blue talent point, whatever that means. And here is uh, a fire, a shield, a plus three, uh, okay. Uh, and this isn't even described. Uh, ah, this is horrible. The, there is no way you can find out what these cards mean by looking at the rulebook itself. You have to go online and you will unfortunately find a list from the author what each, each different card does. The icons here, throw it away and forget about it. It's just horrible. This is what you need, and this is what you need. The cost, and what you get. And the effect, look it up. One thing I like about games is how different their abilities are. So, asynchronous uh, heroes' abilities, it's very good. Uh, this game, however, takes it to, the <laughs> to a lower notch. They have very different uh, and totally unbalanced talents. So each of these here is uh, your actions for one round. So he has potentially eight actions. Robin Hood has six actions, and he can uh, spend two of his wings to gain one gold. But look here, at Sigrid, he always gains two gold each round. Uh, he doesn't gain it permanently, but he can spend two gold each round. And gold is what you need to buy stuff which helps you win the game, like this one. This costs gold. And if you spend two wings to gain a gold, you only get four actions left, and he has eight always. And gold, you need gold, and he, Secret is so much better than any other hero, and Robin Hood is one of the worst heroes of all. I don't, ah, it, makes, it frustrates me so much, so much. Okay, enough nagging. Uh, the game itself is a, it's a basic one. It's actually quite abstract, because each villain here is a just token with a matching symbol on it that you have to beat to beat it. 
Uh, then there is uh, special abilities of the Fallen Villains. It's uh, mentioned on the cards that you should draw. And when the, the draw card is empty, you have to shuffle it and uh, redraw. Uh, and the special ability on the villains are mentioned on the card and not the tiles itself. There's no, not even an icon there to mem help you memory, help you remember that you need to do something special. And when you shuffle it back into the new draw deck and there is no copy of the card left, how are you supposed to remember what to do when you kill an enemy? Oh, you get a gold! Oh, really? There isn't even mentioned in the rules. It's infuriating. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, the game. The game is fairly easy. Uh, for each round, we draw cards uh, that match uh, according to a number of players, and we place the figure out uh, depending on what die number we roll. Two. So in this case, we'll draw a, a tile of this particular reason. It's a buccaneer. One of these on space two. Let's see one here. And then we continue. So black pieces always go on the blackboard, pink on pink, and green on green, and so forth. Uh, on my turn, I may spend one wing token to move one step, like so. Then I may spend one of my star tokens, like this, to defeat the matching symbol here. So it's a very abstract game, as you can see. Uh, at the end of the round, for each remaining villain on the board, this threat marker moves up. Uh, spaces. Uh, when it reaches 7 you can enter a mini game that uh, summons the Black Fortress and you have to defeat this before you defeat the boss. The boss only appears when the threat reaches 16 here. Now the problem with this is if you are doing well you are managing threats on each board fairly easy, it's low, very low, and you have good plans and you have a lot of items and nothing is going to happen. Because the only way the boss is going to appear is if the threat reaches level 16 and then you can defeat it. So, if you are saving the world, it doesn't really work because you have to manifest the boss first for some reason. So it's encouraging you to go against its rules by, well, its spirit by keeping the land safe. Yeah, let's make the land a bit more unsafe and then we can get the boss, okay? Sounds good, yes. Uh, I, I have no words. When I was going to get the 12 realms, I was really looking forward to it. Actually, I went so far as to paint the fi figures, because my first uh, play session should be with the painted fixture as a, <laughs> miniatures, as I saw in the Kickstarter video. And, of course, I wanted to have the best experience. Uh, so, I read some great reviews on it. It seemed like a perfect fit for me. It's a cooperative. It's, uh, Thin based, so it's it's good. Uh, and then I played the game, and as you can see, tell by my review so far, it <laughs> doesn't really cut up to anything that I wanted. The game itself is fine, surely it is fine. Uh, so if you can look past all those errors or mistakes or omits in the rules, then it's okay for me and. Then you have to look past the shallowness of the game, because it is a dry game, so it's thematic. No, it is not thematic at all. It has great components, yeah. Uh, the great min minters, great details, great artwork, great everything except for gameplay. And I was really hoping it was going to be something else, because this is just up my league with the cooperative game. and uh, Yeah, so I was really disappointed of this game. Uh, and I played it several times now, and each time is more boring than the next because, and the last I mean, because the uh, all you do is place tokens and you don't really do any interesting choices because most of it is quite logical. There is always the best solution to everything, and when you can be better, at, be too good at the game to win it, that doesn't make sense at all. How, how can it be too good to win in a cooperative game against evil? Mm what? What? So yeah, I cannot recommend this game at all, actually. So, it might be for you, I don't know. I played it with kids and they don't didn't understand why some, were, some of the heroes were better than the, than the others. And mm, 
yeah, so this is a total pass for me. So I read on Kickstarter again that there's coming an expansion, actually two expansions, and they don't seem to change anything fundamentally about the game, so I'm going to skip on those two. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I, I hope I'll see you again in the next episode. So, see ya. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.